Commissioner Rob Manford, thank you for being here. There has been a COVID-19 outbreak among the Miami Marlins. It is a crisis obviously unwelcome, not totally unanticipated in today's world. Now we know that two baseball games have been postponed this evening in Philadelphia, in Miami. What can you tell us about the Major League Baseball schedule going forward beyond tonight? Well, our first concern obviously is the health of the players and their families and making sure that we do everything possible um, to minimize the spread of the virus among our employees. Um, we've been fortunate so far. We've done tens of thousands of tests. Our positive rate has been 0.4%. So we feel like the protocols have worked pretty well. Um, notwithstanding that fact, we have made some decisions. Um, the Miami Marlins will not play their two games in Miami tonight and tomorrow. Uh, we're doing some additional testing. If the testing results are acceptable, um, the Marlins will resume play in Baltimore on Wednesday against the Orioles. Would those two games in Miami be rescheduled for Baltimore? Um, it, again, we're waiting to see exactly what we get in terms of test results before we make a decision. Right now, um, the only thing that's firm is that if the test results um, result in negatives for the rest of the team, we would play at least two in Baltimore on Wednesday and Thursday. You, every Monday, have a weekly call with Major League owners. Right. Today, was there discussion, questions about the possibility of this season being if not canceled, put on hiatus? No, there really wasn't. Um, we, we talked about the situation. Um, I think most of the owners realize that we built protocols anticipating that we would have positive tests at some point during the season, that the protocols were built in order to allow us to continue to play through those positives. And I think there was support for the notion that um, we believe um, that the protocols are adequate to keep our players safe. The protocols you talk about, walk me through that, because from what I understand, Marlins players were tested Friday, results come back the next day. Sunday, there's a decision apparently made among the Marlins whether they're going to play that day or not. Does all that line up with what happened this weekend in Philadelphia? Well, I think really what happened um, was there was testing on Friday, um, one positive on Saturday, testing again on Saturday, and the three additional uh, positives on Sunday. What then happened under the protocols um, was we did contact tracing um, on all four positives. Um, there, were, there was, I think, a, a, a small number of players who met the CDC guidelines. They were quarantined. We ordered additional testing. We did symptom checks. Um, we did temperature checks and decided to proceed with the game on, on Sunday. So just to be clear, the CDC guidelines are about close contact. That's correct. In other words, just being a teammate of a player does not put you at risk. That's correct. There's a distance requirement as well as a duration requirement. Contact tracing. From what I understand, each team does have people available to do contact tracing. With the Marlins, have you learned anything about the origin or the scope of the outbreak based on contact tracing so far? Right. Each team does have an, at least one individual who was trained to do contract tracing, and they're supervised by an individual in the commissioner's office. Um, we have some theories as to what might have happened. Um, nothing definitive at this point. What did you learn from the testing during summer camp before we got to the point of teams beginning to travel to play regular season games? Well, it's been really a constant process for us. Um, we have um, improved the testing. Um, it, there was a timeliness issue early on. We've completely eliminated the problem of having pending tests that people were talking about. Um, but that applies across the board in terms of the protocol. It is an evolving situation. We continue to look at them. We're looking at them again today to see whether there's anything that we've learned from this situation that might cause us to make alterations. It's been said that one team with an outbreak such as this is baseball's worst nightmare. Is that the way you look at this situation? I, I don't put this in the nightmare category. I mean, obviously, we don't want any player to get exposed. 
Um, it, it's, it's, it's not a positive thing, but I don't see it as a nightmare. We built the protocols to allow us to continue to play. That's why we have the expanded rosters. That's why we have the pool of uh, uh, additional players. And um, we think we can keep people safe and continue to play. Is there a point, a critical mass, so to speak, within the league or within a team that would cause you to shut down part of the schedule, all of the schedule? Um, there is certainly both. Um, there, there, there's certainly both. I mean, I think that um, a team uh, losing a number of players that rendered it completely non-competitive would be an issue that, that we would have to address and have to think about making um, a, a change. Um, whether that was shutting down a part of the season, um, the whole season, that depends on the circumstances. Same thing with respect to league-wide. You know, you get to a certain point league-wide where it does become a health threat, and we certainly would shut down at that point. Commissioner, as you know, you're trying to get through a 60-game season and a postseason without the so-called bubble that we see right. in play with some other sports, the NHL, the NBA. I know at one point a few months ago, baseball considered that idea. Mm -hmm. Do you think at all at this point now to think about whether that situation, a bubble for MLB, could have been workable? I think um, the decision that we made with respect to the bubble um, was the right one. Um, we're different than other sports. Uh, we would have had to have multiple locations probably just in order to have enough facilities to make it work. The numbers of people involved and the numbers of people to support the number of players was much, much larger in our, our sport. The duration would have been much longer and the longer you go, the more people you have, the less likely it is that you can make the bubble work. You know, I, I think the NBA and the NHL um, have an advantage, smaller numbers of players, shorter period of time, and, and um, I understand why they did what they did. I'm just not sure it was workable for us. Now, to get back onto the field, you and the Players Association agreed on a, a very diverse and in-depth manual, operations manual, on health and safety protocols, more than 100 pages. Um, but I wanted to read you a reaction today from David Price, one of the players from the Players Association who chose not to play during this 2020 season, in which he said that part of the reason I'm at home is right now is play because players' health wasn't being put first, and I can see that hasn't changed. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I disagree with, with David's comments. I think both for the MLBPA and for us, the health issue was the one that had to be resolved. It was the most important one to all of us. Um, in terms of the activities that have happened in the last few days, as I said, you know, we followed the protocols to a T. Um, we went beyond um, those protocols in the sense that we canceled um, games, two for the Marlins so far. Um, we're open to having to cancel additional games if we feel it's necessary to keep our players safe. I know you were hopefully optimistic at the start of this to get through this season uninterrupted. Has this weekend, the events with the Marlins, changed your optimism about completing this season uninterrupted? Well, I would say it this way, Tom, we expected we were going to have positives at some point in time. Um, I remain optimistic that the protocols are strong enough um, that it will allow us to continue to play even through an outbreak like this and complete our season. So right now it sounds like you, me, Major League Baseball, is waiting on test results from both the Phillies and the Marlins. Mm -hmm. How soon can we expect those? How soon will we know whether teams have been further uh, exposed to the virus. I expect that um, we will have uh, an initial set of test results late, late tonight, and I think you'll have an update tomorrow as to how we expect to proceed beyond the couple of days that I've mentioned already. And finally, Commissioner, as we've got along very early in this season, you had the best laid plans in place with your protocols. It seems like a fluid situation. Is there anything you're learning as we're going along about what can be better, what works, maybe what doesn't work? Yeah, we, we have made 
adjustments to the protocols on an ongoing basis. There were conversations today um, with the MLBPA about what we should be doing um, in terms of the protocols themselves and the enforcement of the protocols, making sure that we're uh, following them in every way we possibly can. Um, as I said earlier, it's an evolving situation and we continue to reevaluate where we are in the protocols and what we can do to keep the players as safe as possible. Commissioner Rob Manford, thank you. Thanks, Tom.